Good morning. All right, let's try that one more time. Good morning. Thank you. Uh, this is a very special day. Uh, we are announcing the uh, groundbreaking on a very important solar project here at JFK. Uh, before we get into our program, I want to acknowledge, um, thank you. <laughs> I want to acknowledge uh, some uh, very important people who are here with us. Uh, I want to start out by uh, acknowledging the presence of our uh, elected officials, uh, Gregory Meeks, not only not only congressman, uh, not only wonderful community leader, but a ranking member of the House Foreign Relations Committee. Very important post at the per current current time. Assembly member Alicia Heinemann, thank you, for, Alicia, for being here. Assembly member Khalil Anderson. Uh, this project, as a uh, uh, I'll say a few more words about that when I introduce uh, Congressman Meeks a little later in the program, but we would not be where we were if without the support of the community and uh, elected officials. Uh, so uh, thanks both to Assembly Member Anderson and to Assembly Member Heinemann for being here. Uh, also here is Port Authority Commissioner Alicia Eve. Uh, we have Eric Potts, Vice President of Total Energies Renewable USA, who uh, we will hear from in a moment. Justin Driscoll, President and CEO of New York Power Authority, uh, who we also hear from in a moment. We also have Elijah Hutchinson from the Mayor's Office of Climate and Environmental Justice. Thank you for being here. We have Adrian Esposito, Citizens Campaign for the Environment. Uh, we also have Deputy Queensboro President Ebony Young, uh, who we will hear from in a moment. And I also want to acknowledge the president of many members of the JFK Redevelopment Advisory Council. And we know that we are in the long-term parking lot, which has just announced its presence. I also want to acknowledge some uh, uh, the uh, key staff members at the Port Authority who have had a key role in bringing uh, this project to where it is today. Derek Utter, Port Authority Chief Development Officer. Uh, Jackie McCarthy, uh, the Port Authority's Director of Aviation Redevelopment. Chris Diamond, Director of the Port Authority Office of Sustainability. Uh, Terry Rizzuto, General Manager of JFK Airport, and Mike Driscoll from JFK Airport, and Jessica Force, the Program Executive of the overall JFK Redevelopment Program. So really appreciate their efforts, and they are, and their colleagues uh, are really the, have, have been the energy that brings us today. I also want to make a particular point of acknowledging uh, and thanking Governor Hochul. Uh, while the governor couldn't be with us today, her commitment and unwavering support, not only for what we're doing here at JFK, but for environmental initiatives across the state, and therefore for this solar project in particular, has been her support has been vital to keeping these projects moving forward. In fact, this solar project, which we're about to discuss, uh, the governor listed among her list of key infrastructure projects in the 2024 State of the State as a key element of her climate objectives. Yesterday, as we all know, people around the world celebrated Earth Day and celebrated the efforts that we are all making together to combat climate change. But today we're here to do more than celebrate. We are here to begin construction of a new solar carport that will cover an area larger than 11 football fields combined on this very parking lot. If that sounds big, it is. It will be the largest solar carport and energy storage system anywhere in New York State and we are proud that we are doing it here at JFK Airport. 
The 12 megawatt output of clean energy will eliminate more than 6,000 metric tons of greenhouse gas emissions every year. That's the equivalent of driving a gasoline power car 26 million miles or burning 11 million pounds of coal. Reducing our carbon footprint is vital to our effort at the Port Authority to get to the goal of net zero greenhouse emissions by 2050. And we are committed to making JFK and our construction project and our efforts here a key part of that net zero goal. Not only will this solar carport provide clean energy for the airport, but it will also provide a reduction in energy costs for low-income households in the surrounding community. And one of the key foundation blocks of our effort here in transforming JFK into a world-class international gateway is to be sure that benefits accrue to the community surrounding the airport. As we said from the beginning, the $19 billion investment that we are making here at JFK must go forward in a way that drives a fair share of the economic benefits to the local community. Our private partners are building two international terminals. We've expanded and modernized two other terminals, four and eight. And we, the Port Authority, are investing nearly $4 billion into JFK's roadways, uh, new garages, and many other infrastructure upgrades. But across all these efforts, across all these efforts, we have worked carefully and in great partnership with the JFK Redevelopment Community Advisory Council. And that council has been led by Congressman Meeks, who is here. Thank you so much for your support, advice, and hard work, and Borough President Donovan Richards, who is represented here by the Deputy Borough President. The transformation of JFK will benefit, is benefiting today, the residents of the community that surround the airport. We're making historic investments in local businesses and in minority and women-owned businesses. They are participating in the financing the design, construction, and soon the operation of a new JFK, including concessions that create a uniquely New York sense of place. And I have to interject here that when I say the design, the financing, the legal work, one of the key contributions that Congressman Meeks has made, and he came to me very early in our process to make clear that our efforts with respect to involving minority and women-owned businesses, with respect to involving community uh, members, had to, in had to include professional services, had to include all efforts of the economic contracting that the Port Authority has done with respect to this project, and we are delivering. We are delivering, Mr. Congressman. Men and women from Queens are finding employment opportunities thanks to the efforts of our recruitment and outreach programs in partnership with the Advisory Council. Youngsters from our communities are being exposed to educational paths and career opportunities in the world of airports and aviation thanks to, to our partnership with York College and we will be expanding those efforts. Along with economic art opportunities, the community was also very clear about lessening the environmental burden of building the airport. Indeed, one of the committees of the Advisory Council specifically focuses on our environmental efforts in terms of minimizing impact on the community. With that concern in mind, we developed new strategies for what is truly an enormous construction effort. We are spending on this phase of the construction effort, $15 billion. But instead of using trucks to move materials to and from the site over local streets and roads, we've turned to the waterways around the airport to replace trucks with barges. Instead of hauling cement in across highways and local streets, we are making it here on JFK's property. We are bringing in by barge 
new building materials we are taking out by barge, construction waste. Altogether, these construction strategies will eliminate 300,000 truck trips from local streets and highways. The solar carport afforded us another opportunity to share the benefits of JFK redevelopment with the community. Half of the carport's 12 megawatt generating capacity will be used to provide reduced energy costs for low-income households in the community. The other half of the power will be used on the airport heavily to power air train. This solar project is only one of many environmentally responsible practices we're putting into place here at JFK. As an agency, we have committed to a net zero target for all emissions by 2050, with a 50% reduction in direct emissions in the next eight years. And relying on solar power, relying on renewable energy, and developing efficient energy practices are a key foundation block of achieving that goal. Today we take a big step as we begin construction on what will be the largest solar power project we have installed at an airport to date. We are committed to addressing climate change to net zero by 2050 and to investing in our communities. And today is a tangible example of this commitment to the environment and to our community. So thank you for listening to that overview. And I want to bring to the uh, to the podium, Justin Driscoll, who is the CEO of the New York Power Authority. He is a key partner. Without NIPA, we would not be here today. We would not be here on many of our energy projects. And Julian, I want, uh, Justin, I want to thank you for your partnership and turn the microphone over to you. Thank you, Rick. Thank you. Well, good morning, everyone. Great to, great to be with you all here today on a beautiful day. Uh, this project is a fantastic project. And projects like this, they don't happen just by themselves or with one entity. It takes a partnership to do, to do a project like this. And this is a great example of a great partnership between the Power Authority, Total Energy, and the Port Authority. And we couldn't be prouder at the, at the Power Authority uh, of this project. It's, it's one of those projects that not only benefits the Port Authority, but it benefits the surrounding community, the residents of the community here, and it benefits us all, the residents of New York State, with cleaner energy. So we're just delighted to have been a, a partner in this project. Um, Rick, I want to thank you uh, for your leadership. You've done a great job bringing us together and helping the entire state of New York take a significant step toward a greener, more sustainable future. And your leadership in in making these environmentally conscious decisions uh, creates a great example for the rest of the state. So thank you for your leadership. Later this year, uh, this parking lot will host the largest on-site solar and storage project in New York State. We'll also be able to lay claim to New York City's largest community solar system, all, containing, all contained within 21 acres of solar canopies. And that is no small feat. And as I mentioned to Congressman Meeks, one hidden benefit is we're not going to have to plow this parking lot anymore, right? <laughs> uh, first of its kind project, this first of its kind project will serve as an example of the current transformation of the energy industry, protect the environment and lower energy costs for New York families. JFK is now a high visibility model for the rest of the state for integrating renewable energy sources into facility operations and significantly reducing carbon emissions. The project will also provide guaranteed electric bill savings for 25 years to historically disadvantaged and environmentally impacted communities around the airport. The Power Authority took the lead on structuring this community solar portion and successfully petitioned our New York State Public Service Commission to clarify a portion of Con Ed's tariff that would allow the project to benefit communities in need. And as I understand it, the change we needed to make was this is actually two parcels. There are two separate projects on one parcel. And that had never been done before, to have two projects on, a, on one piece of land. So we were able to get the Public Service Commission to see the, see the benefit of, com of, of combining these two projects on this parcel. 
The electricity generated from this portion will be sold in the Con Ed's local grid, improving the system's resiliency and providing clean energy to the surrounding community. Additionally, bill credits generated will be offered to low-income housing providers such as NYCHA to reduce the cost of electric bills. These credits are offered at a minimum of 10 percent savings for those participating in the project. This project will help New York State to realize its goal of installing 10,000 megawatts of solar by 2030 and procuring 70 percent of its electricity from renewable energy by 2030. Governor Hochul's climate leadership actions position New York State to lead the nation toward a cleaner and more sustainable future by supporting innovative projects like this, one, like this one we are here to celebrate today that reduce emissions and help us meet our climate goals. I want to take this opportunity to thank our project manager who is here with us today, Ben Cuozo, and NYPA's distributed energy resources team for doing an excellent job and sticking with this project over the through the COVID period and all the bumps and ups and downs in this project's history to make this project happen. Along these, um, Ben and his team will be working on similar projects around the state and along these lines, in addition to this project, NYPA's energy efficiency teams are working with the port on a $4 million project to install energy efficiency LED fixtures in Hangar 19 and replace the air train's track heater controls work work that will save the Port Authority more than $240,000 annually. And we're also installing electric vehicle chargers to power ground support equipment like plane tugs and baggage loaders. These innovative clean energy projects are what NYPA does best. We serve as the state's energy advisor, helping our customers meet their clean energy goals that ladder up to helping the state as a whole meet its clean energy goals. So we also now look forward to working with communities to prioritize renewable projects around the state that will benefit neighborhoods like this and businesses across the state. By advancing solar access and utilizing affordable clean energy, clean and reliable electricity, we're paving the way for the way others and the way for others to follow and our environment and our communities will be better for it. It's projects like this that will help us get to where we want to go, a greener, thriving, economically vibrant New York powered by clean energy. So thank you all again. Congratulations on this great project. I'm so proud to be here with you today. And thank you, Rick. Thank you, Justin. Uh, these projects don't happen without a team effort and really appreciate the New York Power Authority and all of your staff who have worked hand in glove to bring not only this project but many others to fruition. But the Port Authority also not only relies on its public partners, uh, but we believe strongly in public-private partnerships. And this has been a project which has had its ups and downs as we have tried to figure out how to navigate uh, various changes in the energy supply environment. But we have really had a wonderful private partner, and it is that private partner who is going to drive uh, the construction and ultimately the operation of this project. They have stuck with us through th thick and thin, and we have really appreciated Total's commitment to the project. Uh, we, we appreciate its participation in the construction and operation of the carport as another example of the public-private partnerships that the Port Authority has leveraged to build the infrastructure of the future, and this is a leading example. So with that, I'd like to ask Eric Potts, Vice President of Total Energies Renewables USA, to take the microphone. Good morning. Uh, great to be here and great to see everyone on a beautiful sunny day. It's a good solar day today. Um, I, in case you're not familiar with Total Energy, it's just a, a bit of a brief background. We're a, a global multi-energy company. In the U.S., we have 6,000 employees across 30 states, but we're new to this solar um, uh, industry in, in, as a part of Total Energies. Formerly, we were part of a company called SunPower, but I'll talk more about that. First, I'd I do want to thank the Port Authority and JFK Airport for hosting this event and for working with us in this public-private partnership on this iconic project. Um, and I also want to acknowledge the Port Authority and the Power Authority for executing on this vision. It's not easy to, to dream this big and to make it become a reality. So thank you for that. Um, 
just I, I don't know about anyone here, but I'm a window seat person when I'm flying. And so um, last night as I was flying into JFK, JFK Airport, I was reminded of why I personally got into solar. It's flying in and seeing empty, empty parking lots, empty rooftops, empty land where we know we can do more with that. Uh, and then also just being in the airport <clears throat> yesterday, seeing the signs about the $19 billion transformation, uh, really just proud to be part of this transformation at JFK Airport. It's the signage, it's the energy, it's the construction, it's the alarms going off. Uh, nothing beats kind of being out, hearing, seeing, feeling a transformation at the airport. And, and also personally, it reminds me of the energy transformation that we're a part of here together, as we've heard. Uh, we're trying to shift from a fossil fuel dependent energy system to one that's more balanced, larger dependence, uh, larger dependence on domestically produced renewable energy, solar, storage, and wind. So the same transformation that the airport is going through my team, we're proud to be also part of the energy transformation that's happening today and will be witnessed as this project gets uh, operating. You know, sh shifting back to the project here, uh, the solar panel, which you see over there on my left, uh, it's the same as the 32,000 other panels that will be deployed here. It's a high efficiency, high reliability panel. It's the same technology that's used on the International Space Station. Um, and then what you'll see today is we have uh, some augering equipment. We're going to be drilling a hole. We'll have 332 holes drilled here. We'll put these big rebar cages in there, fill it with concrete, and that'll be the foundation for the carport. Then we'll install um, canopies, put the modules on top of the canopies, connect everything electrically. We have some batteries which we'll be producing as well to help shift that energy. And all of that will be connected to uh, the, the grid system here at the airport. Uh, so that's what these renderings here can hopefully help you uh, envision. Our role, as Rick mentioned, was we helped develop the project. Uh, we're leading the engineering, the procurement of the equipment and the construction. But I think most important is that long term, we're a 25 year partner. We're going to be the owner and operator of this system. And that makes sure, that ensures that all of our uh, initiatives are aligned. We want to see as much energy produced that drives as much revenue as possible for the project, that generates the most savings for the Port Authority, and delivers the most clean energy for the community. So, complete alignment from end to end in terms of our role and all of our partners. Uh, really, just to close here. Um, I wanted to share how important the state of New York is to Total Energies. <clears throat> this is a marquee project. We have other solar storage and wind projects, w which we'll be working with the state on. Very excited to see those come to fruition. And so again, I just wanted to thank the Port Authority, the New York Power Authority, for bringing clean energy to JFK and the broader Queens community and to furthering New York State's leadership of the global clean energy transition. And so thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Eric. And we do look forward to working with you on this, on this project. Uh, I also have to say I appreciate you referring to the signage. Uh, that's mostly for the Port Authority staff who's in the audience, since signage is a big and important communicator in terms of what what is going on and uh, how uh, we're advising our customers to deal with it. So we've talked about the two public uh, agencies who have brought this to fruition. Uh, we've talked about the private partner who has uh, been part of the conception and the design and the execution. What we come to now is at least as important uh, a set of voices. And that is a set of voices from the community. And it is led uh, by Congressman Meeks, who I've already introduced, uh, who is the co-chair, along with Donovan Richards, the uh, Queensboro president of the JFK Advisory Committee. And this is 
this is not window dressing. This is at the core of what we're trying to do. And by the way, if we slip or get slightly, our attention wanders, uh, I can tell you that Congressman Meeks and Queensboro President Richards brings our attention back. And we are delivering. We are delivering. And we're delivering contracts in the billion, worth in the billions, with a B, of dollars to minority and women-owned business. We are delivering jobs. We are delivering contracts to local businesses. We are working hard with the community in terms of education opportunities and making young people in the community aware of the potential of careers in the world of aviation. At the center of this really has been the advisory committee. It has been our relationship with Congressman Meeks, with his colleagues, with Queensboro President Richards, with his deputy who we will hear from in a moment, but Congressman, thank you for your efforts. Thank you for your partnership. And with that, I turn the microphone over to you. Let me thank you, Rick. First, let me thank the governor uh, for her vision and commitment to make sure that we're transforming what is now to better for tomorrow. And for sticking with and working with you, Rick, at the Port Authority as we transform this airport to make it what it was when it first was developed, the very best airport on this planet. And with your leadership, Rick, we're working and we're moving and we're striving to do just that. And I think that what you talked about is key, partnerships, partnerships. And I know for me, as a member of the United States House of Representatives, it's the partnerships that I have with my colleagues, Assemblywoman Hyman, Assemblyman Anderson, and others. We are a team working together to make things happen so that tomorrow is better than today or yesterday. And I want you to know, this is not easy. I mean, because things change. How you do things change. And talking about these partnerships, some would like government to do it by themselves. We can't do that anymore. Some would like to do the private sector by themselves. We can't do that. It's working collectively, hand in hand, glove in glove, to make a difference because every thought and every idea makes a difference. This project, when we first started talking about it with my colleagues, so sometimes behind the scenes we have push and pull. That's how you go and have progress. We challenge one another internally. We come back and we say, we need this, we need that. We then get people in the local community because we've seen in other projects, sometimes you know you can do weird things with numbers, weird things with statistics. So you gotta have a check and a balance and we have experts in this community that understands the numbers and how to be sure that they are real and they have taken to the task. Port Authority has welcomed them on the team. They look at the numbers, they verify the numbers, they verify the people that's on the job, gets the job done. And so those individuals, the private companies from here that's working to make sure that the community has its part, we say thank you. And to the advisory committee, and I want everybody in the advisory committee to stand up. You see, sometimes when you're in a changed transaction, you know, I think about the development of this nation, I think about the development of this state, I think about the development of this city. 
And once upon a time, when they were doing and making way for the next generation, some were left out. In fact, some was outright discriminated against. You would have red lines that would be put. You'd have, you know, at one time, railroads or other highways that divided communities and made some communities a part of it and others left out. But I got to tell you that with the leadership that we've had with Rick Cotton, we're making sure that these communities are included therein in every which way. And setting an example for others to follow. You know, when you talk about from the top down and from the, down, from the bottom up. So if you're an individual that's struggling to make it and want to try but you, to get a skill, and you go through it, we've tried to make sure that we've given you and helped you to get that skill. If you're a small business owner and you want to do business on an airport, but you need some help doing paperwork or getting access to capital, be bringing people to board and using local folks like Greater Jamaica Development Corporation to help finance and to find where that capital is so that you have access to capital for a chance to change your life. If you got big money, but you happen to be a person of color and you haven't been able to be involved at the top, we made sure that 30% equity in these terminals went to people of color. If you're a local person, and you know sometimes people look and we talk about the environment locally, how you suffer from some of the environmental concerns that people have that live around airports. And that's why we have this environmental committee as part of the advisory board, but trying to make sure that we're coming with state of the art, new technologies that reduces and or eliminates some of those concerns and career opportunities so that the airport becomes a big plus to the community. Working with our schools and, 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 and getting young people exposed to opportunities of what their tomorrow could be like. That's what this does. That's what we're striving for. That's what we're moving for. And then when you think about this place that we call Earth, it's smaller than it's ever been. And there's one thing no matter what, we all share the air. This is one planet that we all is home to every one of us. And it is our job to make sure that we try to pass it on in a better condition. And sometimes when you're living through something, when you're living through a transition, it's hard. And we're living through a transition. We're living through a transition to save this planet, to improve it and become and be able to utilize renewable energy. So the things that a single woman, Hyman and Anderson and I do, along with the other elected officials, we're not just thinking about today. We're thinking about tomorrow. I know for me, everything that I do now is focused on four little girls. I have four grandchildren. And so the focus is, what will their world be like? How can I make sure that they can breathe the air? How can we make sure that we're preserving our environment? This project, the largest in the state, will lead the way for others to follow. We are leading. We are making sure that other airports that are developed follow the example that we are setting right here. This is state of the art. 
I close by saying this. I talked to many of my colleagues in Washington, D.C. They are looking at what we're doing right now. They are starting to copy. They're asking, can they see this document or can they go talk to this one? Can we do that? Because we want to do that in our communities too. We got this committee of airport, of people that represent airports. They are looking at what we're doing in the same way, quite frankly, me and my colleagues looked at what was going on in Atlanta several years ago in the 70s. We will build upon it. We'll make it better. We'll work together in the Keys partnerships. And you know in a partnership, I'm sure that with the Port Authority, to the Power Authority, to our private sector, to our labor, there is not always agreement. There's this conversation, we're working together, and then it's coming up to an agreement to move forward to make it better. So every one of you, the staff of the Port Authority, everyone that's out here, wherever you represent, I say thank you. Thank you because each and every one of you are a partner to making the United States of America, which is the leader of the entire world, do and become that example that others will follow to make this place that we call the planet Earth better. And we're gonna start right here at JFK Airport. Thank you very much. Mr. Congressman, proud to be your partner. So I'd now like to bring to the microphone uh, Ebony Young, the Deputy Bureau President of Queens. Uh, Congress, uh, Bureau President Donovan Richards has been a co-chair with Congressman Meeks. Uh, he has been a true partner in the way that Congressman referred. And Deputy, Deputy President, uh, you have been a true partner too. So let me turn the microphone over to you. I think Congressman Meek wrapped it up very, very well, who's also a mentor of mine. Thank you so much for your work, Congressman Meeks. Um, yes, let's give that up right now. You've worked very hard and very diligently, and I know the borough president appreciates partnership. Uh, solar power, renewable energy, real people partnerships equals steps toward real environmental justice. If we are going to be a new world class gateway, then we need to be new world class thinkers. And that only starts with real partnerships. We've got our leaders in, here in the front. We've got our ultimate leader in Congressman Meeks. We've got JFK. We've got the Port Authority. We've got public and private partnerships. And that community is real world-class thinking. In the words of our borough president, Donovan Richards, with the world's borough being in the midst of becoming a world leader in clean energy, this transformative solar panel project at Kennedy Airport, in the midst of its own historic nearly $20 billion redevelopment, will bring us one step closer toward the revitalization of real mission work. Queens already leads the city in solar panel installations prior to this initiative. So it's only right that states, the state's largest solar carport located right here in Southeast Queens gets its proper recognition. So we wanna thank uh, Governor Hochul, the Port Authority and all our partners for, for bringing this project to life and for ensuring that families who live just beyond the airport this is the real, real work right here, are the ones who benefit the most from it. Thank you all so much. So that concludes our, our program. I want to uh, ask the speakers to join me. Uh, we are going to have, uh, we're going to take note and call attention for those of you who are sensitive to loud noises, you may, want to be careful, but we are going to uh, celebrate the uh, groundbreaking uh, that's going to take place behind us.